guys welcome back if you're watching this video that means that you have um, completed the first screencast you've read chapter seven and now you are ready to get started with your um, activities for the day so the first thing we're going to do before we get started with our activities and our questions we're just going to review how to make an inference so remember an inference is an educated guess that the reader makes about the text an inference is a guess about what the author is not telling us and in order to make an inference, we take what we see in the text, what it says, we think about what we know, and then we make our inference. So for example, from chapter one, I can infer mama doesn't like living in Flint, Michigan. So my inference, my educated guess is that she does not like living in Michigan. And the author does not tell us that she doesn't like living in Michigan. The author does not say that, but I'm making an educated guess. And here is the what I saw in the text that made me think that. The text says that she complained about how cold it is and that she missed living in Alabama. And also she teases daddy about moving somewhere so cold. So I know that in my own in my own experience, if I'm complaining about something, that means that I don't like it. If I'm saying, you know, it's so cold, I wish I never came here. And if I'm teasing someone about something, it means that I don't like it. So I'm able to take what the text says, what I know, and put that together to make my inference that mama does not like living in Flint, Michigan. So this is just a review from what we um, talked about in chapter one, and now we're going to apply it to what we read in chapter seven. So here I am in chapter seven, and we finished our journal entry of the day and our vocabulary, so now we're gonna focus on our comprehension questions. So the first question is, why would Byron straighten his hair? Why would he get the conch? What do you think motivated him to do this? So you have to make an inference. So the text does not tell us why he straightened his hair, but we need to look back and see if we can find a clue as to why he decided to change that about himself and look at what he's saying to his parents and the way that he's acting in order to make an inference, okay? Question two. How did Joey react to Byron's choice to change his hair? Use evidence from the text to explain your thinking. So we want to go back and look at how Joey was thinking and feeling and what she was saying when she first saw Byron and she first saw his hair. And we're going to reread that part of the text and then explain in a sentence, Joey was feeling, hmm, or Joey was saying, hmm when she saw Byron, and we're going to use that example from the text to answer the question. Question three, do you believe it was fair of dad to shave Byron's head? Explain. So now you're going to actually share your opinion. Do you think it was fair that Byron, so Byron broke the rules. He, he went against what his parents had asked of him and what his parents had said um, that they wanted him to do. He broke the rules and the consequence was that his dad shaved his head. So do you think that was a fair way to give a consequence or do you think that was unfair? You're going to share your opinion and then explain your thinking. So I think it was fair because or I think it was unfair because it's up to you um, to, to decide what your opinion is. The last question is, what do you think that dad might have to get back to grandma Sands about? Make a prediction. So you're going to think dad is on the phone with grandma Sands which is mama's mother, what does he have to get back to her about? Why would he be contacting her? Remember, she does live in Birmingham. So what, what might he be talking to her about? Make a prediction. Mm -hmm. So those are the four choices that you have today for your questions. You only need to choose two. So at this point, circle two that you'd like to answer and then um, go ahead and answer them um, below in the spaces. Just make sure you write which question you're answering, which question you're answering, and resume the video when you're ready for your activities of the day. Okay, if you are joining me back in the video, that means you've answered your two questions and you're ready to choose your comprehension activity. So remember that there are going to be two choices, but you only need to choose one for today. So option one, in a few sentences, pretend that you are Kenny and summarize what happened in chapter seven. Focus on the main parts of this chapter. So you would write as if you were Kenny, you would say, I saw this, um, 
we did this, Byron did this, I felt this, and you would really just write it from his perspective as if he was writing in his own journal about what happened in the chapter. So that's choice number one. And choice number two, Mama and Joetta are both upset by Byron's new hairstyle, but for different reasons. What are the different reasons? Compare and contrast their responses using the Venn diagram on the next page. So what you would do here is you would go back to the text and you would look out the reasons why Mama is upset about what Byron did, the reasons why Joey's upset about what Byron did, and you would figure out if they are similar or different. So if it's something that just Mama believes or the reason why just Mama is upset, then you would write it in here in the circle in Mama's uh, side. If you believe that it is um, something that just Joey is feeling or just a reason why Joey is upset, you would write it here. And if you think that it's something that they both have in common, if it's a reason that they both feel upset, um, then you would write it in the middle. So what you'll, you will do if you choose this option is use your Venn diagram to look at how their um, feelings and their reasons for being upset are similar and different. And remember, the similar goes in the middle and the difference go on the outside circles, depending upon if it is Mama or Joey um, that you're talking about. So go ahead and pause the video and decide which activity you would like to do and then resume the video when you're ready for your exit ticket. All right, if you are joining me, that means you are ready for your exit ticket. So here is your question. Do you think that it is possible to show courage through accepting consequences? Yes or no, and why? Write your answer below or comment on Google Classroom. So what this question is asking, it's really your opinion. Do you think showing courage, showing that you are brave, um, do you think that it, when you accept a consequence, when you say, you know what, you're right, I messed up, I apologize, and I will make it right. Um, maybe, you know, at school, for example, yeah, you know what, Miss Weston, I was talking, and I apologize. Do you think it takes courage to do that, to accept when you've done something that you're not supposed to? Um, or do you not think that takes courage? Do you, do you think that's brave, or do you not think that's brave? So I want you to say yes. It takes courage to accept consequences or no, it does not take courage because, and then explain your thinking. Um, that's how you'll be graded for, for this question. So again, you can write your answer below or you can comment in Google Classroom on the chapter seven assignment. Um, that's all for today and Miss Ngali will be bringing you chapter eight in the next video. See you soon for chapter nine.